today. He is the pastor at God Chasers Community Church, and when we've gotten together and uh, it enjoyed friendship together, I love his heart, um, and I thank God to partner that we're friends and that we can partner together in the work of the kingdom of God here in San Antonio. So would you guys give a rowdy and warm welcome to my friend Dante Banks. Amen. Can you guys give it up for your pastor, Pastor Doug Robbins? Come on, come on. Man, I'm so grateful to be here again. I'm so grateful to be at City Church downtown. Can you just give yourselves a hand? I'm excited to be here. And listen, like uh, like Pastor Doug was saying, I like I'm 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 like always on ten. So I'm always on ten. So I'm gonna ask you guys to at least come up to like an eight or eight and a half, right, and sort of match my swag. Okay, can y'all do that? Like uh, match my swag today. Okay, look at your neighbor and say match your swag today. Okay, now look at the neighbor you skipped the first time on purpose. You made a choice. You made a choice to skip that person and say, and you can help too. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Uh, at, at God Chasers, we stand for the reading of the word. I don't really have a good reason why we do it, but we do it. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand together with me. And we're going to, if you can turn your Bibles uh, to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to have it out on the screen as well. But, you know, some people don't believe preachers. So you might need to see it for yourself. So Matthew chapter 6, and for those of you, uh, you know, who, who can trust me, it'll be on the screen. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you guys a, a, a one one other verse first. I'm going to read this from John chapter 6. But before I do, before I do, can, I, can we put my family on the screen? I just want to acknowledge my, my little family. Y'all, this is my, this is, this is the Banks family. This is my, my youngest son, Savon. He's, he, he, he's on the end. He looks taller than me. He's not. It's the hair. I'm, I'm still the tallest. I'm still the tallest. I'm holding on to that. Uh, that's myself. This is my beautiful wife, Tabitha. Everybody say hi, Tabby. She's hiding in the back somewhere. <laughs> this is my, my oldest son, Dominique, and his wife, uh, Marilyn. And uh, uh, I'm, I have a, tr- a lot of trouble remembering names, so I got a shirt made with everybody's name on it. So I can make sure I got everybody. Okay. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 11, but I'm going to read John chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, verse 35 says this. It says, Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst again. Now, we're going to read Matthew chapter 6 together. Can we do that? City Church downtown, can we do that? Okay. Are we going to be participatory today? Amen. All right. Are we ready? We ready. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Our Father. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we love you. Now help me help them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we give God a hand praise all over this building? Come on. And you can have your seat, amen? You can have your seat. You can have your seat. Thank you guys again for having me today. I'm excited to be here today. And today I want to talk about the bread. Today I want to talk about the bread. Look at your neighbor say, he's going to talk about the bread today. Look at the one you skipped again. You made a choice. You chose. (laughs) And say, he's going to make me talk to you today. He's going to make me talk to you today. No, I, 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 I do, I do, I, I, I pastor a church called God Chasers Community Church over on the northeast side of town, and we're just excited and elated. God is doing some wonderful things over at God Chasers, and I'm just excited to be here with you guys. Do you realize that God only has one church, right? There's only one church. When he comes back, he's not coming back for a city church downtown. He's not coming back for Bandera Road City Church. He's not coming back for God Chasers Church. He's coming back for the big C. 
Church, right? And we are a part of the Big C Church. So I am grateful that I get to be a part of the Big C Church today and come here and just share a little bit with you guys about the bread. Jesus is introducing a concept here in Matthew chapter 6. He's introducing a new concept. And for some of you guys, you'll realize that this is connected to something that happens in Luke chapter 11, where the disciples literally look at Jesus and say, hey, hey, can you teach us how to pray? Somebody say, teach us how to pray. And they look, at to the, they look to Jesus and say, teach us how to pray. Now, the beautiful thing about Jesus, if you ask somebody who went to a cemetery, I mean seminary, if you ask them what the gospel was, they would say it was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that would be a great, you know, biblical answer. And we could, we could respond to that and say, yes, that's correct. But the gospel is more than the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the life death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus shows us with his life how we are to live. Amen? He shows us with his life. He, he, he did more than just sacrifice his life on the cross, but he, he gave an example of how we should live. Amen? And so he also gives an example of how to pray. And when he said, when he said this prayer, this particular prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer, it's really not his prayer, it's our prayer. It doesn't belong to him, it belongs to us. He said, he, they said, teach us how to pray. He said, okay, pray like this. Now, we've turned pray like this into say this prayer. But it's not, it's not really to say this prayer, it's to pray in this manner. And then he starts it off, he says, our Father, this is so beautiful, this is so wonderful, this is the best part of this whole prayer. The best part of this whole prayer is understanding that you are no longer alone, you are no longer by yourself, you belong to the God of all creation, he loves you, he cares about you, you are connected to the Father, you are not alone. You have been adopted, engrafted into a, a new family. I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't need a band or anything. Sometimes I just want to put on my shouting shoes because I have been engrafted into the family of Jesus Christ. And this is the first time in all the Gospels where he referred to his father as our father. Our Father. See, I can pray to this God because I have relationship with this God. I'm not just a steward. I'm not just a servant. I am connected through the relationship of Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross. Now I am connected to the God of the entire universe. Our Father. I am related to it. Uh, I put my kids up on the screen because I, I became a father. A, a, a true story. I became a father when I was 17 years old. It was hard then. <laughs> it's easy now, a 39-year-old empty nester. That's the wonderful thing. But when I got <laughs> back then, <laughs> it wasn't easy. And I wouldn't advise any 17-year-olds, just wait, okay? Be patient. But, but what I do understand is that my, my fathers and my kids have certain access to me. They have certain access to my house. They have certain, even when they don't live there, <laughs> They have certain access to my refrigerator. <laughs> I didn't know this. I found this out later on. I thought when they left, we could just change the locks and everything and just... But no, they have certain access because of their relationship with me. And there are things that my kids could get out of my house. Oh, hear me right here. There are things that my children can get out of my house that you couldn't get because you're a stranger. But they have relationship. I need you to understand something because there are certain things that belong to you. There are certain things that you can get from your father because you are no longer a stranger. You have been engrafted into a family. Somebody give God praise for your father today. Then it says, our father who art in heaven, who art in heaven. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the time, Jesus is taking the time to acknowledge that Jesus, that God is a heavenly being, that he is a spiritual being. The Bible says it like this, for God is spirit and those who come to him must come to him in spirit and in truth. So I got to access a non-fleshly part of my body or a non-fleshly part of my being to get to where God is. Does that make sense? So even though my flesh is dilapidated, getting, getting old, yeah, even at 39, stuff's starting to hurt. 
in places that I, I, don't, I didn't bump my elbow, it just hurts. I don't know why. I just, my knee just hurts for some random strange reason because my flesh is dilapidated, but my spirit, oh, thank you, Jesus. My spirit is new and it's refreshed every single morning and I'm acknowledging through my spirit that I want to get to a place where spirit is because spirit recognizes spirit. Does that make sense? So I want to go to not just a father, not an not a earthly God, not, not an not a earthly thing. Some of us spend too much time focusing on earthly things. When the truth is, you got to get past that earthly thing into a spiritual realm, understanding that God is in heaven. He's not here. He's there. And, and now, because he's there, I can have access to heavenly places. Does that make sense? So I want to I want to pray when I pray. I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking to a spiritual being about spiritual things in heavenly places. The Bible says it like this. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of darkness, uh, 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 spirits in high heavenly high places. Stop getting mad at fleshly people about fleshly things. You got to get out of the flesh and into the spirit. Our father is in heaven and we need to operate In spiritual places, our Father who art in heaven. Then it says, hallowed be thy name. Now, I need you to understand this. It's not hollow, like empty. It's hallowed. It's hallowed. Hallowed is the beginning uh, to be held. Hallelujah. That's where we get the term. Hallelujah. To give the the best praise, the highest praise unto God. And and so when you want to get to your God, you got to start with a thank you. I said something. I think y'all missed it. When you want to get to your God, you got to start with a thank you. Access to God starts with thank you. Access to God starts with, God, uh, I I know you are spirit, and I know you are there, and I am here, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for life and health and strength. Thank you for new mercies, seen and unseen. God, I, 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 I know everything's not perfect, but thank you for what is good, because some things are good. And I want to thank you for that. This is my pathway to God. Your praise, your worship is access to your God. You don't have access. Now, I told you about my kids before. Now, my kids don't live in my house, but they do have to ring the doorbell. (laughs) This is access to my house. Now, when they get in there, they can do whatever they want, but they have to have access and what I'm saying to you is your praise is the doorbell it is the way you get to your father so when you come to church don't come with your arms folded uh oh don't come with with an idea that I'm just going to sit down and wait for Pastor Doug to tell me something cute and tell me something wonderful I I need to come to access heavenly places and I do it like this this is how I access heavenly places some of y'all heard this song and said this is how I fight my battle That's, that's that's the stance of somebody who wants to access heavenly places. Is there anybody who needs access to heavenly places in here today? Then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is so important. This matters. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Why do I need to say that? Well, because God gave Adam dominion over this earth. Whatever God gave Adam, it belongs to you. Whatever God gave Adam, it still belongs to you. So you have dominion on this earth. If you want God to rule, to reign, to reside in your house, in your family, on your job, you have to invite him into that place. So when I wake up in the morning, I give God praise, honor, glory. Then I invite him in to my house, to my family, to rule with my kids because kids are crazy. I I used to think just my kids were crazy. Then I started pastoring, and I was like, oh, all kids are crazy. Okay. My mom's here today. Can y'all just wave at my mom really quickly? She'll, she'll testify that all kids are crazy. Okay, you got to. But she'll also testify that eventually they get better, right? Right, mom? They, okay, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but now I am inviting God into this place on earth as it is in heaven. I I need you to understand something. There's no sadness in heaven on earth as it is in heaven. There is no uh, there is no disease in heaven on earth as it is. There's no cancer in heaven on earth as it is in heaven. And what I'm inviting God is to do a spiritual thing on this natural planet. I am inviting him into a place where oh, hear me right here where disease is shrunk up. 
I'm inviting him to a place where sadness dissipates, where I can make the beautiful exchange and I can get beauty for my ashes on earth as it is in heaven. Does anybody need some heaven in their life today? And then he says, give us. Oh, we've been doing it all wrong. Usually we start our prayers with give us. <laughs> the, very first, the very first thing we say is give us. Lord, you know I need a new job, God. <laughs> give me a new, you know I need a new car, God. Give me a new, you know I need a new wife. I mean, um, <laughs> I need a wife, not a new wife. If you got a wife, keep the wife you got, okay? <laughs> Pastor Doug's gonna come out here with a cane. Get out of here. <laughs> But we start our prayers with give me, but, but the truth is Jesus did a litany of things before he ever got to give me. Now, I want to tell you something good. God doesn't have a problem with your give me. He doesn't have an issue with your give me, but there is a process by which you get things from God. And it starts with recognizing who he is. When you properly identify God, then he'll properly identify you. Does that make sense? When you properly identify him as being a father, he properly identifies you as being a son, son and son or daughter. He properly identifies you. And so you got to get to that place. Then you can get to your give me. And this is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about that place because some of us have needs in our life. We have needs in our life. And what Jesus was saying here, give us this day our daily bread, it would, it, it, would have, it would have rung out loud to the crowd he was speaking to. to. To a crowd of Jews, this would have rung out loud because daily bread refers to something called manna. Somebody say manna. Daily bread refers to something called manna. This is what would happen as the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt as God brought them out of Egypt. He brought them to a place where nothing grows. We call this place the wilderness. And we, we think about wilderness like wild, like there is a lot of growth. But no, the wilderness was a place where nothing grew. Literally, people who were farmers and who knew how to grow, th- knew how to grow things ended up in a place where nothing was growing. I want to help you today because some of you have reached a place where nothing's growing. You knew how to do it. You spend years, oh yeah, if I just do this and I do that, then something will, if I do this and I do that, I'll get the provision I need. For some of y'all, the provision's not like like monetary. You need need love. You need relationship. You need compassion. You need some friends. And you've been in this place where nothing's growing. And I, I, I should have started with this, but I want to I say it right now. Listen, this message probably is not for everybody. It's really for the people who, who are lacking in provision in this season. And you've been praying, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And God said, I am the daily bread. And you've been saying, well, I need and I need and I need and I need. And he's been saying, yes, and I am and I am and I am and I am. And you'll be saying, but I won't, and I won't, and I won't, and I won't. And he says, yes, and I am, and I am, and I am, and I am. And he brought them to a place where nothing was growing. I love this because he brought them there. Sometimes God will bring you to a place where only he can satisfy you. He will bring you to that place where only he can satisfy you. And he brought them to a place where nothing grows, and then something happened. He started to rain down this thing called manna. Somebody say manna. He started to rain down this thing called manna. Now, what is manna? That's a good question because the literal Hebrew translation for manna is, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Where did it come from? How to get here? What is it? Literally, manna in Hebrew, there is no transliteration for it. We didn't make it English. This is the Hebrew word, and it literally is a question. You should put a question mark behind it. Manna, question. What the heck is this? <laughs> Manna was such a, such, a, such a weird substance. First thing is, they didn't know how it got there. People would say it rained from heaven, but the truth is nobody ever saw it literally rain. They just knew they went to sleep at night, and they woke up in the morning, and there was provision on the ground. That, yeah, the one or two people got that already. Because some of you don't know how you got where you are. You don't know how you got blessed. You don't know how God did it in your life. You went to sleep one night. You woke up in the morning and Jesus rained down provision in your life. Jesus brought you to a place. Oh, he blessed you in such a place. And I thank God that he will still 
rain down provision for me. Second thing about manna is that if you ask 10 people, what did it taste like? Historically, theologically, they would say, but there's no real answer for this. Some people, it was, it, was, it was savory. It was good. It was hearty, like a grit. It would last all day long. To other people, it, 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 it was salty. To, to, to other people, if they describe it, it was sweet. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? Well, if you ask 10 people about their relationship with Jesus, if you ask 10 people how, how, how Jesus, what is Jesus in their life, what is this, amen, then, then you'll get 10 different responses. Because sometimes I've needed him to be a doctor, and he was a doctor for me. And other times I've needed him to be a lawyer, and he was a lawyer for me. And then there are other times he was just sweet. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know thus saith the Lord, he's a sweet, sweet, sweet God. And then there's, there's one more thing, there's one more fact about manna that, it, it, that I want you to remember today. That as they would collect manna, as they would get it, the Bible says that you could not collect more than your daily portion. You had to just collect, if you collected more than your daily portion, it would spoil, it would turn to worms. You could only connect, collect enough for today. Now that's very hard in a 401k society. But we're always thinking about tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? How am I going to live tomorrow? How am I going to eat tomorrow? And Jesus said, the same I am that fed you today will feed you again tomorrow. Can you trust can you trust the I am that fed you on yesterday to feed you again tomorrow? He said, so you took a daily portion. It was just enough for today. It was just for today. Give us this day our daily bread. And the truth is, I, I, some of you have gotten to a place where, where, where you haven't had that daily bread. You've been feeling empty. You've been feeling like, like, like you haven't been satisfied or satiated. And you come to church out of some vain responsibility to just, I got to do something on Sundays when the Cowboys aren't playing. But the truth is, Jesus says, no, the, the bread giver is here. The, the one who gives life, the one who will satisfy you, he is here today. He said, your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. But the truth is, I am the bread of life. And he who comes to me, he who eats of me, will never hunger and never thirst again. And they will have eternal life. This is the bread. This is the bread. This is the bread that came down from heaven. He said, I'm the bread today. Today we're going to take communion. As you're taking communion, I don't want it to be vain repetition. Some of you have taken communion so many times. You, it's, you, you're, you're used to communion. You know all about it. You know, you got the, got the wafer or the cup, and you're like, yeah, I, I know how to do this. Some of you know where you got the Papa Shot communion cup. It's like a Coors can. You just uh, break it open. But the truth is, today, I, I love that we have, we have the bread that can be broken on today. I want, you to, I want you to get in your mind the broken body of Jesus Christ. The fact that he was broken for you. But I want you to understand something, that there is a necessary breaking in, in your life. God says, the Bible says that God, when he took communion, we call it communion, he called it dinner. When he took communion, he, he took the bread. He took the bread. He, he, he blessed the bread. He broke the bread. And then he gave it away. And the truth is, this is, his make, this is how God makes men. This is how God makes women. The Bible says he took the bread. See, God will take you from, from circumstances you understand and from people you love and from people you care about. He'll take you and move you into a wilderness situation. And some of you have been, have been getting mad at God and blaming God because of your wilderness. But understand something, if God took you, then he has purpose for you. He took the bread. Let's hear me right here. He took the bread, then he blessed the bread. I love that. He, 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 he blesses. Whatever God takes, he blesses. Whatever God takes, he blesses. Uh, understand something. Your life is blessed. Your family is blessed. Your crazy teenagers, they're blessed too. Because whatever God takes, he blesses. But then he breaks. 
and you, you, you don't understand the breaking. But God says, I blessed you so you could withstand the breaking. It's what I did for you that you can withstand what you're going through. The Bible says that he broke the bread and then he gave it out. So you're not qualified to be used until you've been broken. And some of you, this is the whole process. You've been through this breaking situation and you keep saying, God, why am I being broken? He said, because I want to use you. Why am I being broken? Because I want to give you out. And this is my process. This is how I feed 5,000. I break stuff. Today, I want to invite you. In fact, right where you are to stand up on your feet. And we're going to go row by row. I want you to come down to this to this station. Uh, there should be a station right in front of your section. If you're in the balcony, you might have to come downstairs. And at your own pace, you guys can go row by row. I want you to take the bread, break it, dip it into the wine. And this is the representation. The Bible says, the Bible says that Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it. <laughs> said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. He didn't say do it often. He said, as often as you do it, keep me in mind. I want you to keep Jesus in mind. I invite you to come break bread. God bless you.